Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Mini 600 Antenna Analyzer, which I purchased from Banggood. Now this Antenna Analyzer was originally designed by Yuri EU1KY. Now after the initial design was released by Yuri, DH1AKF and KD8CC made some modifications to the firmware to bring some exciting new features. Sadly though, on March 19th, 2021, DH1 AKF sadly passed away. The GitHub repo that was hosting the modified firmware has now been taken over by Yuri EU1KY. Now I'll leave a link in the description below as to where you can download this latest firmware. Please note that what I'm going to show you on this Mini 600 is with the latest firmware available, version 1.04. So the Mini 600 covers from 0.1 up to 600 megahertz. However, it can be modified to cover well over one gigahertz, but I will not cover that in this video. And the Mini 600 has an incredibly good color touchscreen display. On the bottom, we'll see a range of ports available. To the left, the USB port there is used for firmware upgrade and connecting to the PC. As I know of right now, the RJ45 socket is not used. You will also notice two 3.5 millimeter audio style jacks, which I believe can be configured for audio when using the onboard DSP. On top of the Mini 600, we see the red power button, which turns it on and off. Another USB port close by. This is used for charging the internal battery if fitted. Also, we have an N-type connector for connecting to your antenna, also along with an SD card slot to house your SD card. Now this particular Mini 600 from Banggood came with an internal rechargeable battery already fitted. It also came with a 4GB SD card already installed. Also included in the box is a set of calibration tools. This consists of the N-Type to SMA adapter, a 50 ohm load, a dead short and open circuit connector. I'll show you how to calibrate this shortly. Now the Mini 600 is extremely well built. And this one comes in a really nice sturdy metal case, so it's fully protected if you want to use it outside. Not only is this well built on the outside, it's also really well built on the inside, as you can see here. Now to ensure that the readings are as accurate as possible, it is advisable to perform a calibration before use. Using the included calibration tools, this makes it extremely easy. So once turned on, head over to the configuration page and enter calibration. We now need to attach the electrical short connector to the Mini 600. Once attached, tap the scan short button on the display. Now this will take a few minutes to complete. Now next on the list is to attach the 50 ohm load connector and then tap the scan load button. Lastly, do the same for the open connector. Now once complete, tap the save and exit button to store the calibration. You're now ready to start using the Mini 600 Antenna Analyzer. So that I can show you some of the Mini 600 features, I've attached my multi-band NFED half-wave antenna. So let's choose the first option here, single frequency. On the top left, we can see the current frequency that is being tested. And in this case, it's 14.2 megahertz, which is showing an SWR of 1.8. By tapping the charts and results windows, we can change the information shown. If we press the set frequency button, we're able to change the tested frequency. You can now even use the quick band change buttons to save entering the frequency. You can also nudge the center frequency up and down using the buttons on the top of the display. Now next on the list will be the frequency suite feature. This may be more familiar to those that have used network analyzers before. The great thing about this feature is that it covers the entire handband which you've selected, making it nice and easy to see the lowest dip and the most resonant frequency for that band. There is also an auto fast scan, which will continuously scan the band. Now this is quite useful if you're making live adjustments to an antenna. The multi SWR feature allows you to monitor up to five unique frequencies at the same time. These are all adjustable so you can set your own frequencies, 
But this is extremely useful if you're tuning a multiband antenna. For example, if you're tuning a multiband vertical antenna, which has separate radiating elements for each band, you can see how adjusting one element is affecting the others. The Tune SDR works very similar to those cheap satellite direction tools, where an audible tone will be played through its internal speaker. To use, you simply set the desired frequency and listen for the tone. The pitch of the audio tone will go up and down depending on the SWR reading. The Find Frequency feature is a little interesting and I believe it's designed to pick up on a transmitter in close proximity and then display the frequency. In my test here, I was holding a handheld radio transmitting on 145.550, but the Mini 600 showed this as 145.534, so it was kind of in the ballpark area, I guess. Now, TDR mode, or Time Domain Reflectometer mode, allows you to roughly work out how long your coax is to your antenna, or to a break in the cable. Now, this is commonly used by engineers to locate cable breaks in cables that are underground. Now this is quite an interesting feature. I'm not sure how accurate it is, but maybe I'll investigate this feature a lot more in another video. Two other features of the Mini 600 modified firmware is an LC meter and DSP. Now these features are quite lengthy to demonstrate, so I'll be covering these in another video. You may have noticed that on each screen, there is a screenshot button down the bottom. This is quite handy as at any point you can save a screenshot, either in bitmap or PNG format. These screenshots are then saved to the SD card, which you can either remove and download onto your computer, or you can view them using the Snapshot Manager tool built into this firmware. Now this firmware also includes an RF generator, where you can set the frequency and modulate in either AM or FM. You can also adjust the power output. Now the last feature on this firmware is the ability to transmit WSPR, FDA, FD4 and JT65. Now remember this only transmits, it doesn't receive or decode. So the FTA, FT4 and JT65 transmissions, I would imagine are only there for testing. However, the WSPR or whisper transmissions could potentially be an extremely useful tool. Here you can set the band into your call sign and locator and then start transmitting whisper transmissions. Now I left this running for a good few hours on the 40 meter band and at the time 40 meters was wide open. However, not one station received my transmission. There are a couple of reasons why this may have been, and the first is that the WSPR transmission doesn't actually work very well. I did verify that RF was being transmitted, and audio that was transmitted did sound like whisper, you know, the long tones. But I believe the main issue I have here is that the Mini 600 doesn't have a real-time clock installed. A whisper works on a system where the transmissions need to be transmitted at a specific time. So it's more than likely that this was transmitting either way too early or way too late. Further investigation will be needed for this. And if I can get it working, it will be an extremely useful tool for real live world antenna testing. Well, there we go, guys. It's an overview of the Mini 600. If you've got one of these or the Mini 1300 and you have the WSPR working, please leave a comment down below. Let me know how you got it working. Also, if you've had one of these for a long time, because I know they've been around for a while, let me know what your thoughts are on this, on how accurate they are and how easy to use. In my opinion, this particular model that I got from Banggood with the internal battery makes a great field day tool that you're going to take out with you and test your antennas before you start working them. Until the next video, take care, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.